Paladins! Holy Knights sworn by oaths. It's such a cool class idea. I've only made like one Paladin video. I need to make more Paladin videos. So today I will show you a Paladin build for all you melee lovers. Welcome to Pack Tactics where we go into melee to smite people. Well, Kobold, you said melee sucks. Yes, I usually dismiss melee as it is actually mathematically terrible. And no, you do not need a frontliner to protect your squishy casters. Casters that are built reasonably well will be at least as sturdy if not sturdier than your frontline. This is not to say that melee doesn't happen. It obviously happens. Sometimes you just end up in melee. Another thing is people just like playing melee builds and that's fine. Just play to the level of your party and everyone will have fun. That's the important part. That's why I'm making a melee paladin build. Not because it's stronger than tabletop builds flagship paladin, which mostly plays from range, but because some people just really like going into melee, which is valid. Melee can be super fun, especially when you get to do paladin stuff. However, doing this, you will likely not be able to get everyone in your aura of protection, and you'll likely take more damage in melee compared to range, obviously. But this build will be much more than adequate if you already have others who want to play melee. The more people there are in melee, the less bad it becomes. If the idea of a paladin in shining heavy armor that can attack with weapons or spells while protecting their party to the utmost appeals to you, then this build is for you. Using the optimization levels from tabletop builds would likely be around mid-high or maybe a bit below. It picks a good subclass, good spells, and some good feats. So let's get into it. Our first few levels are simple. We pick a species that gets a feat at level 1 and immediately pick a Polar Master. Polar Master is THE feat for melee paladins. You don't have reckless attack like a barbarian, so you won't be able to offset the drawbacks from great weapon master attacks. That's why we're not picking that. So get yourself a stick, like a quarterstaff, or a glaive. You can get a glaive. Here I pick dueling to increase the damage of this feat by quite a bit with the quarterstaff, while holding a shield in the other hand. Quarterstaff is an underrated melee weapon. Fun fact, it also counts as an arcane focus. Anyways, I'll be building this with the assumption of using a variant human, but feel free to make some changes if you wish. I'd recommend a stat line like this. A combination of strength and charisma is important for a melee paladin, as you need the former for your attacks and to properly use heavy armor, and the latter to the ever so important aura of protection, and of course spells. Finally, we pick con for concentration protection and the additional hit points. I recommend arcane proficiency through variant human for the purposes of crafting spell scrolls. That's really important. And stealth and perception through your background. These are some of the most important skills you get access to because of the former can offset your clanking noises with the help of Pass Without Trace for the purposes of surprise. And the latter helps to avoid being surprised and avoid traps. For tool proficiencies, you pick up Smith's Tools and Thieves' Tools, for which you can find more information in the Tools Guide for Tabletop Builds. But it's not a big deal. Through our class, we pick up Athletics, which will allow us to get out of grapples through shoves more easily. And Persuasion, because we're a knight in shining armor. As for subclass, drumroll please, Gator! Aha! I tricked you, it's World Anvil! Bring your world building to the next level with this powerful tool of creation. With the aid of World Anvil, you can make stories greater than Lord of the Rings. If you are an artsy kind of person, then this is perfect for you. It's a fun and easy tool to create personalized worlds. I think it's even more rewarding when you have friends getting involved in your world, be it your players or even new friends you meet in the World Anvil community. That's right, they've got a passionate community full of creative people that can give you solid advice for using the tool, or even help you with storytelling itself. 
They can brainstorm with you. Check out World Anvil, watch some guides, look at other people's creations, and be inspired. If you like what you see, then use the code PACK at the checkout and you'll get a 40% off any yearly subscription. Back to the video, we pick Oath of the Crown. I believe this is one of, or even the best subclass one can pick for a melee paladin. For one big reason, and it's not their channel divinity options, it's Spirit Guardians. This is one of the oath spells they get access to, and for someone who wants to spend a good amount of time in melee, the output of this spell is a good reason to be there. But that will have to wait. Before then we have a few boring levels while trying to rush headfirst to Aura of Protection. We get access to Smite first. My advice remains the same since my Smite video. Don't use this to blast through all your resources. Make use of it carefully when you specifically need the Nova. Check out my video for more details. We get some channel divinity options that are honestly not incredible, but depending on the room, you can use champion challenge to set up funny AoEs. And turn the tie to bring up multiple unconscious allies. At level 4 we pick plus 2 charisma, which brings us to 18 charisma. At level 5 we get extra attack, we do 3 attacks now. Remember we have polar master, that's why we do 3 attacks. Finally, at level 6, we get Aura of Protection, which gives all of our allies in a 10-foot radius around us a bonus to their saving throws, equal to our Charisma modifier, which is currently 4. That's really good. At this point, I hope you've picked up spells like Bless, Wrathful Smite, Protection from Evil and Good, Aid, Find Steed, and Locate Object. For more details, I recommend looking at the builds on Tabletop Builds. Specifically these two. The next level might surprise you. Or, well, probably not. We're picking up a level in... Hexblade Warlock! We got the Charisma, and it provides us with some nice protective options in the future. Though for now we already get Shield. Some other options to look at are Eldritch Blast and Magic Stone. And even Hex for if we already have someone else casting Bless while we're fighting something like a dragon. As for the biggest reason for this dip, it's Warlock's special way of recharging their spells. Namely, on a short rest. Now Cure Wounds has actually become quite a banger, because we can heal people during rests and gain our pack slots used for this back on a short rest. Now we will take the remaining levels into Paladin to finally get that juicy Spirit Guardians at level 9, as well as Aura of Vitality. Some other spells of interest are Dispel Magic and Revivify. At level 8 into Paladin, make sure to max out your Charisma. Now our pack path to greatness is set. We will finish the build by taking more levels into Warlock. The reason for this is because it allows us to do what we do best but more often. Once we get 3 levels into Warlock, we swap Cure Wounds for Prayer of Healing, and cast it however much we need by short resting to regain second level's pack slots. We've basically become kind of like a healing machine. Not as effective as life berries, but pretty good. At 4 levels into Warlock, we pick up Warcaster. It's nice concentration protection, and it allows us to force lands. Basically, Polar Master allows us to opportunity attack when people walk up to us, and Warcaster allows us to replace opportunity attacks with certain spells. If someone dares threaten us, we just pew 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 with Eldritch Blast, sending them right back to where they started. We do pick up Repelling Blast. I'm going to talk about the invocations later. Just hold on. If we have Spirit Guardians up, they might not even be able to whack us anymore. Because remember, the creature speed is halved in the area. If for some reason this really funky strategy is banned at your table, pick Resilient Khan instead. And then pick Warcaster at level 17. My progression would make you first pick Warcaster, then Resilient Khan. After 5 levels into Warlock, we get to basically always have Spirit Guardians up and running. The spell lasts a really long time, and when we run out, we could just short rest and cast it again. We're the best frontliner ever! We also swap Cure Wounds back in instead of Prayer of Healing, because we now get to cast Aura of Vitality. This is even more healing! Some spell recommendations for Warlock would be Sypnotic Static, Ban 
Banishment, Sickening Radiance, Scrying, Hypnotic Pattern, Fly, and Dimension Door. But if you need more details, again, check out Tabletop Builds. As for Invocations, Devil Sight can give you Dark Vision, Eldritch Mind can be used until we have more Concentration Protection through prior mentioned feats, and later swap for Repelling Blast. Pact of the Blade and Eldritch Smite allows us to do big damage when need be. After this, Agonizing Blast will add more damage when we need ranged attacks. Whereas Tome of Levestus will come in handy when we really need to soak some damage. That's basically the build. You've got Spirit Guardians to make your time in melee worthwhile, and the recharging goodness of Warlock allows you to use this strategy very often, while also being able to keep your party healthy through the adventuring day. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Maybe me or somebody else might help you out. Doing full builds in this format is a bit difficult, but I hope you get the gist. End of video. Remember to check out World Anvil, by the way. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.